disconnect. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, honey, and glory. To Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rekafadash. We want to give double honors to our pastor and elders, great millstone, who teach very well. But we want to get this truth from and citation out there to the hopeful elect who continue to preach this word in our truth, faith, and sincerity, man. And again, we out here again to prophesy against these Americans, man. Because that's what these uh, Christians uh, fall short of, man. Because they all about their uh, love and huggy dubby spirit, but they don't prophesy, man. They don't <laughs> prophesy about the dangerous things to come. They don't talk about, about the family. They don't talk about the sedition among men and the dangerous times that's coming ahead. Why? Because the spirit of prophecy is not upon them. You got it. Yeah, because Second Edges chapter 15 and verse 1, it says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. So this the Lord commanded you to speak the words of prophecy, man. The Lord didn't just command you to just go speak about love, hugs, and kisses, man. You have to realize that how about Shemiah was shot, he's a, a fearful power. Uh, Papa Kishah, Ezekiel 2, in around 10, man. Because at the end of the day, you're high by Shemiah Shah, he's sending death threats, man. And if you don't hearken into the death threats, then you're going to get caught up in it. You know? Ezekiel 2, and verse 10. Mm -hmm. And he spread it before me, mm -hmm. and it was written. Nine. Nine. Ezekiel 2, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, mm -hmm. and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Yeah, and that's the scriptures, man. You got it. Verse 10. And he spread it before me. And it was written within and without. Mm -hmm. And there was written therein mm -hmm. lamentation and mourning and woe. So it was written inside the scriptures, lamentations, mourning, and woe. Bad things are going to happen upon the planet Earth, man. But again, your church don't teach you that. Christianity don't teach you the fear of your how by Hashem They actually yeah. tell you to uh, test the Lord, man. Basically, you you go commit adultery, you you do wickedness uh, all throughout the week. Then on that Sunday, you can repent. No, man. Your how by Hashem he don't work like that, you know? Yeah, come. Back in uh, 2 Edges 15 and 1, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. The words of prophecy is it which I will put in thy mouth, showing said the you, Lord. It's showing you it's not our own words. It's the Lord that's putting his words in, in our mouth, man. We're prophesying unto these people, telling you what's going to happen before it happens. You got it. It says, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And we just read it in Ezekiel, the uh, second chapter, how the words that's in that paper is lamentations, mourning, and woes, man. Now only bad things are going to come upon these Americans, man. You know? You got it. Verse 3, it says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. That's it. It says, Fear not the imaginations against thee. Because while uh, these pastors, they, they teaching a, they teaching a, a doctrine of prosperity. You know, we're teaching a, the doctrine, if you don't get right, you're going to die, man. Which that's the rightful doctrine you should be teaching. You know? It says, Let not the incredulity of them that trouble thee that speak against thee. It says, let not the incredulity, you're going to tell the word incredulity, it actually means unbelief. Because that's why people buck up against the word, because ultimately they don't believe in the word. They don't believe in the, in the trials and tribulations that the Lord has spoke about. And we don't count. Uh, get Romans on 3 and 3 real quick. We don't care if you don't believe the things that we say, man. Because ultimately the family is still going to come. That that, that sea help is still going to get mandated. And, and for lack of better words, all hell is still going to break loose. Why? Because the Lord says so. Yeah, God, Romans 3 and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? That's it. For what if some did not believe? Believe in what? Believe in the report. You got it. Share the unbelief to make the faith of your how about Shema Shah without effect. He said, should I make the faith of the words of the most high be without effect? Just because uh look, John John don't believe or your pork chop eating pastor don't believe. You think the Lord is just gonna hold back and let him do his wickedness? You got it. Verse 4, the most high forbid. Basically meaning hell now. That's the ancient world for hell now, man. The Lord, he's not going to switch up anything for a nigga, man. It's already set in stone how the prophecies are going to get written out. You got it? <laughs> it says, but let every man be a liar, mm -hmm. as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sayings. It's like it. It says, uh, from the top. Uh, the most high forbid, mm -hmm. you let the most high be true. It says, let the most high be true, which means what? The scriptures. You got it? But every man a liar. But every man a liar. Like we, we just had this guy, he was he was speaking, you know, for 35 minutes. He kept on putting up his scriptures, man. 
Which meaning what? He was trusting in his own mind. He was leaning to his own understanding, man. You know? Yeah. It says, as it is written, mm -hmm. that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. Why we justify in our sayings? Because we bag it up with precepts. You got it? Hey, we say, thus saith the Lord. That's it. We ain't speaking out our own belly. That's it. Anything that, that, like, if we were speaking out our own, that's why the scripture said, lean not to thy own understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, scripture also tell us about vain babbling. Is it? Right? When you're going outside of your shot man, meaning what? Going outside of the precepts, going outside of the scriptures, that's what it leads to, man. You got it, huh? okay. And it's a beautiful point, man. Because, again, those vain babbling is going to lead to you being vain, man. Leads to you actually dying. Continue on, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, mm -hmm. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. He says, mightest overcome when thou art judged, and we're going to be justified in our sayings. Why? Because we're not leaning to our own understanding. We're actually believing on the word. We're believing on the report. You got it, huh? Hebrews 4.1. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, mm -hmm. least. It says, therefore, let us therefore fear. Fear what? The things that's coming down the pipe, man. Because it ain't like it's a guarantee, like, yeah, I'm out. No, bro. Hey, through much tribulation, we shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. You know? You got it. It says, least a promise being left us mm -hmm. of entering into his rest. Yeah. You got it. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Mm -hmm. You got it. For unto us was the gospel preached. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. You got it. As well as unto them. So everybody have heard the words of Yahweh, I shouldn't have a shot. You got it. Yeah. But the word preached did not profit them. It says the word preached did not profit them, man. It, it didn't actually benefit you. Because again, you hearkening unto the words will actually save your life, man. You you hearkening unto the doctrine, hearkening unto the trumpet will actually deliver you, man. But Jake don't want to hear it. You got some? Yeah, got it. This book of St. John 4, uh, 15, verse 22. Is it? If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. It says, if I have come and have not spoken unto them, they have not sinned. I told you don't do that. You know, like, if, you, if you don't know uh, not to do something wrong, then it's okay. You know, you'll have a, um, for lack of a better word, you have a grace, you got it. But if you know better, if you know not to put your hand on the stove, then guess what? It's a consequence behind it, man. Read that again. Yeah, St. John 15 and 22. Mm -hmm. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sinned. Yeah, they had not sinned, man. Because the, if you didn't hear the word or didn't hearken to, or didn't heard the word, you didn't know it was about a famine coming, then guess what? Then they mean you good. But if you heard about it and you refused to hearken unto it, that means the Lord gonna kill you, man. That's why it's important to hearken unto the words of your how about you now shot and to take it serious, man. Uh, Proverbs. Yep, you know it. You got it? Okay, you got it. You ain't got to do it. Proverbs 13 and verse 13. Yep. It says, Yep. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. You see? And it's beautiful. It says, Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. Because you despising your one, you actually despising your salvation, man. But it says, he that uh, feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So it's a reward for us. It says, um, the word despise. Oh, you got to go ahead. Okay. The word despise, Strong's H, 936. It says, to despise, hold in contempt. Mm. Hold as insignificant. Hold as insignificant. Oh, that, that's just some bull, you know. You, it's a fire alarm going off, and you just ignoring it, man. Right. Not knowing it's smoke coming up your door, man. Mm. Not knowing mm. that, that the flames is coming closer and closer. Yeah. Yeah. It says, to despise, show despite toward. It says, show despite for basically you you hate it, you know. Or mm. uh, uh, you uh, love it less. It, you, it cringes that's when it, you hear it, man. Best, best. You, you, you hear, you hear an alarm. And you cringe instead of running. You know? Yeah, this is uh Second Chronicles 36 and 16. It says, but they mock the message of the Most High and despise his word. It says they mock the message of the Most High. Uh, that's how he did your Howard Shah and John the Baptist. You no, know, call him a drunkard. You know, they call your Howard Shah drunk and they call uh, John the Baptist crazy for the lack of battle words. He can't either either in drinking, and y'all say he had the devil, man. But at the same time, it's the same thing happened again today where it was written before time was written by our learning. So they're mocking us. They, they calling us crazy. But we were filling the scripture of 1 Corinthians where it says the foolishness of preaching please them, man. So it's good when people call us crazy, man. You know, it actually boosts our faith because that's not that we know we're coming on the right road, man. That's so real quick. Going back to that word despise. One word in that contempt. It says 
contempt. A, it says, the feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration. Mm. Basically saying, it, 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 like I said, it's looking not to consider, man. Basically, you got a big lump on your, on your breast. Instead of you consider it might be cancer, you just ignore it. And it's right. only going to get worse and worse, man. Right. You know? Because you, you're saying, look, this, ain't, this, this is no threat to me. Yeah. And, and that's how you're doing the prophets, man. And, and that's how you're doing their words, which their words are not their words. You're saying, man, this shit y'all talking about, ain't no threat to me. It's going to get that far off. You know what that is? Come on, come on. They say, uh -huh. they say this is far off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, they say this is far off. Yeah, okay. You got it? Yeah, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12, uh, verse 26. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he that's seeth it, that's it, that's it. is hey, from many said, days. It, who are, it, didn't, it didn't say that the Edomites. He ain't say the Hamites. He ain't say no other Mites or Ites or Ish. None of that. It said the house of, of Israel. Israel. Which is the one that you started off with in Ezekiel the second chapter. When you go up, it talks about what? Them being a stiff-necked people, man. The same up, man. The same people <laughs> that Noah was speaking to, man. The same people. Which, uh, really? Oh, oh, beautiful. Going all the way. And, and guess what? You people that Noah spoke to, you was coming back in the reincarnation from being the ones in the wilderness mm. that Moses and Aaron was speaking unto, man. Then them same stiff that one man with, damn, you the brothers out here to die. We, we could have stayed in Egypt for this shit. I can hear them talking about that. You know what I mean? I'm just saying they weren't saying these exact words, yeah. but that's, that's, the, that's the terms that they was using on like a, a profound term. Towards Moses, cursing him out. That's the mindset of our people. Y'all talking about some kingdom of heaven. What did you talk about? I, I I work for the government. I got a blah 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 million dollar job a month. I got a five story house. That, that's basically what you're saying. I'd rather stay in Egypt than to live in paradise with my Lord. That's what they were telling Moses, man. Because things don't look good when you're going through that transaction. Go ahead, up. I got some real but the house of Israel were not hearken unto thee. Uh, hey, house, talking about the house of Israel, man. They ain't talking about nobody else, man. Those are the stiff-necked people, man. See, that let us know that these people on this sign, on the right side of this sign, match up with those on the left side of the sign. Why? Because the characteristics and the traits. The scripture say you a tree shall, or you shall know a tree by its fruits. How the hell I know that's an apple tree? How, how do I know that's an apple tree, man? Because the fruits that it's producing. You see what I'm saying? And the fruits that these people produce, I mean, and the ways and their actions, let me know who they are, man. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. God, it says, yeah, you got it, you got it. it says, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, but they will not hearken unto me, but all the house of Israel are imputed and hard-hearted. Right, yeah, impotent and hard-hearted, man. That's the, that, that lets you know that they're that Israel. That, 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 that let you know that they're Israelites, man. Go ahead, huh? Going back to Ezekiel 12 and 27, son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he sees. Yeah, so these are, in, in, in a modern sense, these are the two thirds of our people, man. These are the ones that's hearing the mouths of the prophets, starting with the apostles and the elders, right? All the way down to those that also have the spirit of Yahweh Shah, which is us, right? Which is the spirit of prophecy. Because we're telling you something before it happened. And this is what you're telling us about that something that we're telling you before it happened. That man, hold up, bro. What you talking about? What my buddy said? 30 years. 30 years. 35 years. I heard this. 35 years. Let me tell what he said. Meaning what, man? This, that shit ain't going to happen when y'all talking about it, man. If it do happen. But who's saying it's the house of Israel? Which are the, the ones that Second Ezra speaks of. Second Ezra the 15th chapter said, Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. The things that they are imagining in their mind, meaning what? Unbelief. They said, what they're imagining in their mind? This ain't gonna happen. That's what their imagination is telling them. But guess what it is? That's an imaginary thought. That's make-believe. We giving you facts. Why, how are we giving you facts? Are we giving you thus saith the Lord? Ooh. Somebody words that do not return unto him void, man. That's it. Hell you talking about, man. This is, this is gonna happen. That's it. Go ahead, up. Get you up first. Yeah, God. This is 2 Peter 3 and verse 5. Try that 4. Verse 4, you right. It says, it's saying, where is the promise of his coming? And look, that, and that's what our people say, man. 
man, y'all been sitting here talking this same ish for 30 Ooh. years, man. And we still in America, like we were saying yesterday. This place still thriving, man. I still got a job. You, you still got the ambulance running down the street. Real talk. Hey, they show you the balance, the snare that is. It's outside. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. why the scriptures say, uh, though it tarry, it's well, still not tarry. Because at the same time, it's, it's uh, speeding up, but it looks like it's the same. It's Who's seen such a thing? That's a heavy work right there. This thing's speeding up, but it still looks like it's the same. Beautiful. Hey, that, that, like, yeah, that's why the Lord said that. Though it tarry, it will not tarry. Just like the other brother just said. That's what, the, that's what they saying. Read it again. Yeah, it says, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? See, that's exactly what they, what they said. Like you just said. Go ahead. It says, for well, since the fathers fell asleep. Yeah, so since, since those of old, the main ones that told us these things, they have already fallen asleep and this shit still ain't happened. Right? But what they don't know is through a lack of understanding that we are the same ones coming back. We those same men that was telling you that coming back to fulfill our lot. Now we got it more abundantly. That's why Apostle Ha said what he said. We know more than our ancestors. Because Yahweh Shah said that they have have it more, more abundantly. Go ahead, huh? It says, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Man, ain't nothing changed, man. What y'all talking about? America, see? America's still going on, bro. What y'all saying, man? Birds still flying around here. You know? It ain't nothing changed. Go ahead. Verse 5. For this, they, they willingly are ignorant. So, Ooh. this is the thing that they are willingly ignorant. You got goes back to them being uh, impotent. And, and uh, 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 prudent people, man. Stiff-necked, hard-hearted. Right? Uh, uh, and why? Really, it goes all the way back to the fear of the Lord. Because he sent them a strong delusion. So like, like, like that boy said, poor child, they don't know no better. They, I mean, real, I mean, they can't help themselves. Just like us, the water you all by Shem Yachat, the water you all by Shem Yachat, the water you all by Shem Yachat. We can't help ourselves either. We can't help ourselves. Man, you be, you be mad as hell when you, you can't get a, you can't get a video off. And you feel like, damn, the spirit ain't dealing with me. What the fuck? You be mad as hell. Something go wrong, we can't do what we doing right now, man. Right? So that means we can't help ourselves either, man. Go ahead, up. Yeah, again. That's why, because guess what? We was prisoners unto this world, right? Now, what is that? Uh, uh, damn, I was just reading. Uh, now we now we in the bonds of your house, when we in the bonds of, uh, damn. I can't remember what it is. It's right? about being prisoners of your house, you know? What, what it is? Go ahead, though. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, uh, y'all, okay. Going back, Ezekiel 12, uh, verse 27, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come. Yeah, so this vision, which is what? The destruction of America, man. A righteous rulership being, being planted in this earth, all right? Things not going the way we see it going right now, man. That's the vision that we putting forth, the same vision that Noah put forth. And that's what they was telling Noah, man. What is you talking about, rain? What is that? That's not going to happen. But our people are saying, man, that right there, bro, is so far down the road. But guess what? That, like the elder brother said, that's us being tried. But you got to have, have an element planted in you to even endure that trial. You got it. Mm -hmm. Come. It's the book of Luke 21 and verse 19. It says, in your patience. See, in your patience. So that's the element. Being, being, being Having the capability of suffering, man. You know, waiting day by day. You know, it said, throw it tarry, like the elder brother said, throw it tarry, wait for it. That's what the scripture's telling you. Even though it tarry, meaning it is being prolonged, have some patience. Wait for it. Be like a doctor. <laughs> have some patience. You know what I'm saying? Wait for it. But really what he's saying, seriously, wait for it, man. That's why you want to pray for an increase of patience, man. Go ahead, huh? God, in your patience, possess ye your soul. Yeah, in your patience, possesses ye your souls, because... So Rock chapter 2 tells us the time you fall out, what you gonna do when the Lord visits you? Meaning what? Time you lose your patience, and what does the patience begin to, to get lost at? In your mind. That's why I said faint in your mind. Uh James tell you that, man. About the wavering. Where you do that at? You don't literally go side to side, swerve left and swerve right. 
like the demons say, when I ain't boosted, demons swear, yeah, you know? No, you swear, you swerving uh, in your mind. Matter of fact, the definition even goes into uh, a man, a man that, that that's a swerve off, off of his deliberate purpose. Deliberate purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And his piety. That's it. That's it. Exactly. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, and the cause of that is these doctrines. Because the doctrine is not just uh, presented, you know, in the form of uh, Dr. Khalid mm -hmm. Muhammad, the teachings of. No, a doctrine is just an idea, a philosophy, which, which uh, pretty much detours your walk or either causes you to. Mm -hmm. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, uh, what y'all read? Get that uh, also in, uh, what's that, Ephesians 4? This me right here? Let's go out. Yep, that Ephesians 4 and 14. Hey, because like the brother said, that Christian came up, right? He, he was on a path that led to destruction. It wasn't based upon us knowing him personally or our personal opinion of him and how he operated in his house or, right? No, it was based upon his reasoning as touching the scripture. He got offended when we called him out on error and not knowing the scripture. But see, this is what dictates life and death, man. All right? Uh, the drama that the Lord has prepared, it, it pretty much centers around your reasoning or lack thereof. That's why the scriptures say, um, uh, 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 what's that, in Daniel, the 12th chapter? None of the wise shall mm -hmm, understand. Mm -hmm, that's it. None of the wicked. Yes, it's like it. None of the, none of the, none of the wicked. wicked shall understand. Yep, the wise shall yep. understand, but none of the wicked shall understand. Yep, go ahead. Huh? It's the book of Ephesians 4 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. It says that we henceforth be no more children, yep. tossed to and fro. Right, like the brother said, that way. Yeah. Because you're not single. All right? Remember when you read um, 2nd Ezra, the 7th chapter, it speaks about that path. That's it. Right? Where it has a deep water on one side right. and a raging fire. Oh, guess what? We about to go into a time where all hell about to break loose, man. See, that's, 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 that's beautiful, man. <laughs> yeah, and the people have no clue what's going on, man. They don't even know that a famine is coming. All it takes is for the power, you know. Look, you got these so-called celebrities and athletes and entertainers, right? I think I'm going to go too. Those who have somewhere status in this world, right? Guess what? They don't control the food supply. Neither do they control the powers. They don't have access to the power grids. So that proves that there's forces at work that, that transcends the power of men and mere mortals. Or what's that? Daniel the fourth chapter? The most high ruler in the kingdom of men. See? Yep, go ahead, huh? Come. It says, this like in Ephesians 4 and 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Right, and that proves, hey, when you see guys who, who fall off for whatever reason, they become disenchanted and they they deviate from from the testimony of your house side, right? Uh, um, pretty much it's based upon them subscribing to another doctrine. That suddenly surfaces. They might start off, you know, they ain't a part of the group no more. They do their own thing, and you see, you hear crumblings. You know, you start hearing those whispers. Yeah. Then the rebel come out. They start acknowledging the fact that they really, really believed on what the doctor said. Right. You see? See, the doctrine is the anchor, man. Mm. We don't give a damn about the, about the uh, uh, fringes and the beard. You might somehow can develop a big... Uh, the ancient world. Yeah. Hey, you might, that's spirit. That's spirit. Spirit, man. I can't make this stuff up, man. Only thing that took out about the guy is. You say, y'all say I'm spirit, right? Everybody always say, you have a second making fun. See that? So, uh, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, you can't make the wise counsel, bro. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, that's scary, bro. Like, you're in the presence of your house shot, man. Yeah, that moment, as I expected, dude came out with the biggest beard you ever see. That's, hey, man, call all your house about some house shot. It's only for those whose eyes are open. You see? But, hey, that's not what cements 
the gathering, right? It's all sealed and stamped by what? By the doctrine. You up here because of the doctrine. You ain't, you couldn't be up here if you was in, on something else different. Because if this, we'll be cussing, we'll have you to, now we had the Christian cornered off, it'll be you over there. We actually, you, hold up. Yep, go ahead. Come on. It says, by the slight of men. Right, yeah, see, read that again. Come on. It's on uh, Ephesians 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro. Right, meaning you're not rooted and grounded. That's supposed to be a spirit of steadfastness when you come into this. You should be stubborn in the doctrine. Meaning, no matter how many reports you get, your uncle, man, mama don't want to chop it up with your Thanksgiving night. Well, you you had to disappoint. Oh, well, that's uh, what's that? Uh, Matthew. Uh, no, no, Salaki. Uh, he who uh, he, he he who hate not right. 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 Yeah. Say it. Say it, and, and it's another one too that complements that with, with Peter, where it said we have forsaken all. Right. Matthew, 19. Matthew 19. That's the one. Matthew, yep, 19. Now when you go into that word forsaken, it means to uh, it, it means to uh, pretty much. Uh, matter of fact, get it, get get that get that real quick. You can hold what you got. Come on, you got it. Yep. This is Matthew chapter 19. We're gonna look it up. We're gonna look at that word forsaken. And verse 27. Because the definitions are heavy, man. I ain't want to butcher it. I can't do the justice of when you read it. And you have to adopt this mentality, bro. In this truth, yeah, it's good to be around brothers. You, you are introduced to another way of life. You, you, are, you know, uh, the conversation is, promotes life. Your brother talking about smoothies. And... Yeah, but uh, you know what? No, hey, at the end of the day, you got to understand you have been positioned, right? The Lord gave you mercy. The Lord gave you a chance. This is going away, but you finna see drama, man. That's what you finna see. You finna, and, and it's gonna be so intense to where it's gonna be so severe to where you have to let everything, you gotta drop everything and cleave to your house up. Go ahead, up. Huh? This is Matthew chapter 19. Hey, that's what it's gonna be like. But you know, when something heavy happens, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, a whole blob of water like I'm somebody trying to cover over drop, right? They dropped that spirit of the Lord, man, when you said that. But you know, like if you get a report, you get a report of trouble, right? And the report is it, it, ground shaking. It drives you to your feet, you're driven to your feet. Then there's a sense of urgency come with it. So that's how intense this situation is. So much so that when you have to make decisions, it's decision making, and you very well have to detach from from um, your family. All right, come on. Up. This is Matthew chapter nineteen and verse twenty-seven. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. Right. See. Go ahead. What shall we have therefore? Right. And see that the the uh, maturation. You come into this thing, you don't be settled on your lead. Not. Uh, at, at least not the true believers and followers of the outside, right? Because you do have Israelites, but the scriptures say they have a pureness, a, a, a form of godliness. Like I mentioned, the fringes, and you know, you might have stones, you know? Right, but the inside of the cup, like the brother said, this is what's to be cleansed. Oh, that's why the scriptures say, rent not your garment. That, that's talking about the outer man. I right, well, the word uh, for second, Strong G, uh, 863, it says to send away, uh -huh. to bid going away or depart. Right, you have to depart. You have to sever some relationships in this truth. And you will know which ones to do because the spirit, you know what it is? Whatever spirit is hindering you from performing the services of your how about some outside. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. You got entities that's hindering you fully committed to your how about some outside. It's not that hard of an uh, assessment. So in that event, what you have to do, you have to do, uh, depart. Go ahead. It says to let go. Mm -hmm. It says let alone. Right, you have to let certain things go. That's why when Peter said we have forsaken all, he let things go. And certain brothers have to let certain jobs go. Certain women go. 
Some brothers had to let their children go to a certain extent. Because why? It would hinder them. But see, the Lord is, is merciful. That's why the scripture says, mercy endure forever. You know what the mercy in that is? The Lord showed you that you're going to get them back. Go to uh, uh, Joel. Get that real quick. And matter of fact, let's go back to this precept. Let's read this real quick. This is Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. Then answer Peter. And we're going to go back to that definition. Hey, because that's the proverbial fork in the road. All right? Think not you came in this truth to be here for another 20 years and you an uncle now. <laughs> you came in a young man, now you somebody's daddy. <laughs> and you teaching him the ropes, then you'll be a granddad eventually now. Yeah. Meanwhile, Esau running circles around you. No, we here, right? Really, the gathering serves as a, 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 a point of, of uh, protection. See, we are being gathered into the pavilion of your house by the of shot. That proves that something is about to happen. Um, when the north, when the flood, right, the, the animals was gathered into the ark. That gathering proves that the Lord is about to get down, man. See? Yep. Yep, go ahead. Oh, you know what else proved that? Job. Job, the, um, is that Job 39? Wait, he, yeah. He got, yeah, into thy barn. That barn symbolizes, I'm good. That barn symbolizes a refuge. That's Psalms 91, the secret place of your house by the shop. And one of the reasons why it's a secret place, because we physically gonna be hidden from the advances of Esau, but also the secret place goes into what prophecy is on display. That's why when you read um, Amos, the third chapter speaks about the secrets of the Most High. So this is the secret place where the fate and destiny of you Americans is on display. Your fate being discussed up here. You don't even know it. You're looking at us like we crazy and your fate being discussed. We speaking concerning the way you're going to die. All right, go ahead. Right? Okay. Matthew 19 and 27. Yeah, you don't know. We've got the famine. Right? That's the entity that's waiting on you. Oh, what's that? Ezekiel. Yeah. Yeah, the end watch. The Lord already got it set up perfectly. Oh, you heard of Borden's, the milk? Oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, 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 that's like a major supplier for Alabama and a lot of so Southeast. Well, they said schools are left scrambling. Did you see that? Schools are left scrambling for milk. Yeah, that's an example of the storm brewing. Hey, that happened in ancient Egypt. There was a few locusts starting to descend. You saw more locusts than usual. Like, what the fuck? All right, come on. Matthew 19 and 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. What shall we have therefore? Mm -hmm. Yep, go ahead. Come. It says, And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Right, in the regeneration. And that's a mystery. Okay? that hasn't been disclosed to the masses of the people. The fact that there's a such thing as reincarnation. And that's a, a major ingredient. You can never come into the full understanding of, of uh, Yahweh Shah, man, without understanding reincarnation. All right? Well, hey, because you're, gonna, you're not gonna find a way to, uh, you're gonna find, always find a way to justify the wicked with that. You're gonna say, no, that baby had nothing to do with nothing. See, well. When the son of man, shall sit in the throne of his glory. Right, so you see what a theme is rulership, man. Think not we up here to bring black people together. We are against niggas, nigger culture. You could be kicked, we see a dried up McDonald fry in your car. You, you might be brought up to council. <laughs> where you get that, who was the hell that? Yeah, because this is not enough of nigger culture, all right? The Bible doesn't promote nigger culture. Mm -hmm. And guess what we found out? Nigger culture includes building uh, businesses and becoming more acclimated to America. That's an offense to the God of the Bible, all right? Go ahead, huh? It says, ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut, cunt. Ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones 
judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Right, and that's going to be a process. When you're really going to the details, the intricacies of how prophecy is going to play out, there's going to be a point where we're going to actually judge over uh, rebellious Israelites that's, that's not destroyed in America. All Israelites are not going to be destroyed over there. All the Israelites that's going to be really the two-thirds in it is in America. And they, you know, they, uh, 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 when the scriptures say, uh, scripture say two parts of the land, that's talking about the two-thirds that's in America. They say it like that, so you can understand. But there's going to be other Israelites after the destruction. Because remember, this, you know how you hear the saying, we're getting closer to the end. No, the really the saying is we're getting closer to the beginning. That's why when you read uh, 2 Ezra 6 chapter, it tells you how Jacob is the beginning of the world. So there's a vast future outside of the state of America. But once America is destroyed, we're going to actually come back down in the chariots. In our glory. Uh, that's in the book of uh, Revelation. Is that the 21st chapter? And that's going to submit the promise that Yahweh Shah made to us as touching the miracles he did. We're going to do even greater. So just like Yahweh Shah came down from the heavens, we're going to come down from the heavens. That whence comes thou say, uh, we, we got a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, just, I see you guys out here every once in a while. I was curious. Okay. What's, what's, what's it for? You believe in the Bible? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, look. Here and there, you know. I... Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know what? You can understand. <laughs> yeah, you can understand why the people here in America, their perspective of the Bible is, is sketchy. Because the vibration on the planet Earth. Let me ask you another question. How you feel about the LG? I'm just thinking. Yes, I do blue, man. Uh, the LGBTQ. You cool with that? I'm cool with everybody doing See, that. See, and that's what happens. See, in America, the blend, the, the, yeah, is the glory, the lens of glory. The Bible is against that. Now, what we teaching up here, just in a nutshell, somebody get the sign. We're going to simplify like a picture book. We're going to simplify like a picture book. That's what we teaching, baby. Yeah, the destruction of America, Babylon the Great. The Lord has prepared destruction for America. Now that idea sounds far-fetched years back, but as you can see, the momentum is shifting toward war on the planet Earth. You, have, you heard the ICBM missiles, hypersonic missiles. They was all created to overthrow America, which has proven to be a hub or a springboard, if you will, for wickedness. Now you can become acclimated and desensitized to it, that doesn't mean that it's not a capital offense in the sight of Yahweh Shah. That's the name of the Lord. Oh, you see, listen to us now, eh? No, no, it was a podcast. I was oh, okay. I was my dog. Oh, okay. I yeah. All right, so, so, come on. Come on, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes. Right, so now we're going into the records. Okay, a record goes into a memory, something that's stored. So... According to what we read in here, the God of the Bible in his MO, so you can understand, is to visit the planet Earth as touching uh, their rebellion. Mm -hmm. So Sodom and Gomorrah, you know about Sodom and Gomorrah? I'm not very knowledgeable on the Bible. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, come on. Come on. It says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto oh, yeah. those that after should live ungodly. Right. So Sodom and Gomorrah, which is, was a, a city that promoted homosexuality, all right? Even when you go into it, uh, it, it, it was like slothfulness in Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> when you really go into it. So that's the spirit that's here in America, all right? A very heavy spirit of rebellion, okay? Where? It says, and delivered just like. So when you go into the history, the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and only delivered just like. Hmm. All right? Go ahead. Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Right. So, okay, bro. I'm rolling out. Let's get to All right, good time. Yeah, All right, brother. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, Esau. Yeah, that's, that's our brother Esau. Thank you. That's our brother Esau. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. that's the same motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, cause that's more of a condemnation because like motherfucker, you supposed to be my you know you can intensify an argument. If it's just your cut or just a nigga on the block, it ain't that much, you know. How much can you lay at the responsibility you had his foot? But if it's your brother, it's like motherfucker, you you know you supposed to be my brother. That, oh, that's uh, 
Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Since uh, that. Since uh, uh, no, that, yeah, 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 yeah. that stood in the way. Yeah. All right, come on, huh? come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Then you got that, uh, this is the book of Ezekiel. Uh, This is Matthew, chapter 19, and uh, verse 27. It's, it says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have... Oh, you see, you asked the guy, and then he got that look on... See, that, that don't play... That played out now. That Edomite face, when you got that smile like a brochure. But you see, like an Edomite, like, you know, they promote a commercial, and they got that smile, and it was set up to calm you down. That's the, that's the snare element, because the snare sets up a false sense of security. That's what Esau, that's how we know he's a cunning hunter. Why you got this smile on your face, man? But when we asked him, do you believe in the Bible, that was a trick question. He stubborn. Uh, 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 uh. Go ahead, huh? It says, then answered Peter and said unto him, behold, we have forsaken all, right. and follow thee. Uh -huh. What shall we have therefore? Right, see, so when you come into this truth, you're going to have to forsake by default. You can't hold fast to Christmas and to your house out. Real talk. You got guys there. That was a stumbling block for a lot of men. They was compelled. They, they believed it was the truth, but they came into certain forks in the road, if you will, where the family was calling. And they chose that over your house out. See, the scriptures, that's, that's one of the clauses in the contract. To, for, to follow your house side, you gotta forsake all. Because you don't know if you're coming home. You know, it's like you have a guy, he wanted by authorities, and you jump in the car, he said, look, you can ride, but I can't promise you you're coming home. That's, oh, that's why your house side said, uh, 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 consider the cost. Because now, you're aligning yourself to the most controversial man ever. Right? That's why your house side said, the world cannot hate you, but me and hate him. Because I testify against you. You jumping in the car with your house shot, man. That means nothing can stop that mission. You, you have just given your life over to the cause. Oh, that's in the, that's in the definition uh, for Holy Spirit. If I'm not mistaken, it's say, uh, uh, get that definition for the Holy Spirit in uh, St. John the 14th chapter. Yeah, the comforter, that's it. If you can get that real quick. Oh, this St. John. Go, go, go straight to the definition. All right, go. St. John chapter 14 and verse 26, the, the, the definition of uh, comforter mm -hmm. and the Strong's H, Salakia, Strong's G, 3875. That's a fucking dude, man. They're both of them. And they got a fucking Brazil. Wow. That's crazy. See, that's that's scary. Cause you're on the west. Yeah, it's like you and when you in, it's like a hundred house. Yeah. You in America? Yeah. It's like a hundred house, man. You go across, you go into the hallway. And, oh shit! <laughs> it's Halloween every day. It's Halloween every day. That's a lesson. Yeah. It's Halloween every day in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ghouls and goblins. Hey, yeah, yeah. Guard goals. <laughs> and an Uber just picked him up. Oh, that, yeah. that, that's the guy. Oh, that, yeah, that's uh, Gary Spirit. Yeah, yeah, every, that's a, every spirit is on. Uh, it's that spirit of I don't believe that shit. Like, that's the counter is on his face That. Yeah, right. He looks just like every, that's a demon. You ever see somebody look like that? That's a real demon. From hell. All right, come on, come on, give a definition real quick. All right, the definition of comforter in St. John 14 and 26, Strong's G, 3875, it says, of the Holy Spirit. See, of the Holy Spirit, right, go ahead. Destined to take the place of, of Mashiach with the apostles. Right, yeah, because when the Lord, matter of fact, continue. Right, after his descension to the Father. Yeah, after the Lord ascended to the Father, 
then that spirit was left on the apostles, man. Oh, like the uh, that clown that came up, that Christian, man, who kept pump faking. He'll pull the scripture out and he'll put it back up. Yeah. Yeah, pump faking. Yeah, man. Well, he said, he said the Lord was the last prophet. Hold up, that's not accurate at all, man. When you read Acts, the first chapter, it tells you how uh, the disciples will ultimately be witnesses unto Yahweh Shah, even unto the uttermost parts of the world. Right. And we asked the, that Christian what the word uttermost part man, and he, he, he it was an, a, a feminine spirit came on. Not like you say something to your woman, and, you know what I mean? He melted inside. Yeah, that's why I said, bro, look, this is not, this is raining out for you. This is a council of men. And then he said, he, he reverted to that love. Why won't you love? All right, come on. He says, after his descension to the Father, yep, go ahead. To lead them, to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel. Right, because you have people that have knowledge of the gospel, the scriptures, like the, that Christian who walked up. And he was a homo by night, you know, because you could just see his countenance. And Christianity allows that. But he has a certain knowledge of the scriptures. That's why he got certain precepts. But the Holy Spirit gives you a deeper knowledge, right? Meaning we can read Revelation the 18th chapter and Church of Babylon and the Holy Spirit of understanding. We can associate that with America. All right? That's what the Holy Spirit develops. Well, Taco Bell in that. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. says to lead them to a deeper knowledge of the gospel truth. Yep, go ahead. And give them divine strength needed to enable them to undergo trials and persecution uh -huh. on behalf of the divine kingdom. See, on behalf of the divine kingdom. That's what you signed up for, man. So you, when you get in the car with Yahweh Shah, right, you are committing to a cause that's bigger than yourself. And you have to be ready at any moment to di discontinue from whatever. And then the mercy that comes with that, right? Because that sounds like a cold dish to digest. But really, we have been given a glimpse into the future. In the inner workings of Yahweh Bashim Shah, we understand that we're going to be regenerated anyway. And that brings us back to Matthew uh, 19, chapter, right? Everything we lost on this side, we're going to get it back. See, let's show you how cold the king is. Why well, are they going to ask you to do a work for him and he petty about it? Paying you, no, you're gonna be, man. You, yeah, you're gonna be. Uh, what would you call it for your service? Just compensate your service. Uh, compensate. Yeah. Compensate. Yeah. compensate. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Which that word compensate yeah. goes into uh, right. pay. Yeah. Yeah. With pay. Over to over. Uh, let me. A king say, <laughs> let me compensate. compensate you for your service, That's true. and he give you what you never imagined. Oh, like you see those uh, athletes, they come in these restaurants, they leave a ten thousand dollar fucking tip. Josh, yeah, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's him right there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh. Right, that's a sick. <laughs> and he's just going into the shadow of the Babylon, never to be seen again. Brother Josh. I got something for you. Yeah, come on. Hebrews 6 and verse 10, what you just said, for the most high is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed towards his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. See that? So that's the uh, uh, comfort that comes with it. Whenever you might feel down, hey, because we're in the flesh. If Satan know how to attack you, the Lord knows your pressure points, right? Hey, that's why when you read the story of Job, the second chapter, it, it pretty much gives you a glimpse into how that works. The Lord gave Satan certain parameters he couldn't pass, gave him certain jurisdiction in which he was able to visit Job but it was all an effort to test his loyalty to your how about Shimei I was saying. So the Lord know, in the flesh, you might think about certain loved ones from time to time. You might have to walk away from certain relationships, family, children, or whatever. But what's the comfort? That was, we understand why the scriptures the comfort of them. Because we know we're going to get it all back, man. And the Lord is a great king. He's not going to have you laboring and, and you coming to get paid and, He's, he's not he's not answering the phone. Wait, yeah, come on. Luke 14 and 25. And 
there went great multitudes with him. Mm -hmm. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father mm -hmm. and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Right, many of you, how sad is preferred first. That's why John the Baptist said that he was preferred before me. So Yahweh Shah comes first, all right? That's uh, what the Apostle Paul made the statement. I counted all things as done to win the excellency of the knowledge of Yahweh Shah, which, which proves to be the bridge to our salvation. Come on. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters. Right, yep, go ahead. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Right, because if you love a broad more than Yahweh Shah, it's going to soar. Because what? You're going to get a, 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 a text on a, on a group chat. Got to be here at 3 o'clock. And then you're gonna, that's going to be more so. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, naturally that's what happens. Because if it's something else you love, then you have a side getting in your way now. Right? It's something else that deep down, and nobody knows it's you. That's you. You know who you. And, and you know, there's something going on, you like, you love this situation, then the brother say, hey, now we got to do this. We got a lesson. You're like, fuck, man. You start to hate your house side. On the flip side, we love this boy. That's why when the job call, you're like, fuck that. Because you know, you, your love is toward your house side. Everything else, you start to despise. Yeah, yeah come on, come on. First Thessalonians 1 and 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love mm -hmm. and patience of hope in our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach mm -hmm. in the sight of the Most High and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of the Most High. Right, yeah, and this labor, it comes with patience because you have to really wait. When you consider hard laboring, hardcore labor, it, it's farming. Well, life is produced. Well, in that event, what happens? You have to be patient. And, and there's a saying in the world, the fruit of your labor. Mm -hmm. So you have to wait on the results of, of your labor. So here we are, we laboring for your house by your shot, and we expecting something. That's why uh, the Apostle Peter said what he said. What shall we have there for? All right, so we can go back. Come, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27, it says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. Mm -hmm. What shall we have there for? Right, see, so we forsook all and followed the Lord. Now, have we forsaken all? Technically, no. But we are ready to, at that point, they forsook all. They left, they dropped their nets. Okay, they, get, that's it, that's spirit, come on. It's uh, Matthew 4 and verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Shah, walking by the sea of Galilee, mm -hmm. saw two brothers, Simeon Woo. called Peter, and Andrew his brother, mm -hmm. casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Right, go ahead. And he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. And they straight away left, left their nets, and followed him. They let it right go right then. They let everything go and follow Yahweh Shah. And the reason why the scriptures emphasize their occupation because of just that very thing. It was a bread one. That's how they lived. That's how they, that, that was their life centered around it. They straight wasted said fuck that and follow Yahweh Shah. Right? But in our case, the Lord have certain situations come up where you have to make a decision. All right? It's only right. That's the right of passage. That's why Yahweh Shai said what he said. No man can follow me except now, uh, but we ready to give it all up. See, that's the mentality. We ready. But the Lord is great, you know. He's not going to suffer us to, what the scripture say? He's not going to put so much oh, on oh, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, more, yeah, yeah, more than you can bear. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Even in that, he's going to make a way to even escape. Even in that, he's going to make a way to escape. So the Lord just testing your loyalty how far you will take it. Sure. So the Lord said, you know what? Hey, I'm going to say what else heavy about Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, man. He a great king, even Yahweh Shah. Great Yahweh Shah, right? That's the king. Now, I'm going to give you an example of how what this is like. That's why the scripture speaks about that uh, pretty much mimicking Colossians, the third chapter, putting on as the elect, right? Uh, uh, rehearsing the righteous act, which this is a form of that. Well, you know, you consider a king, right? You ever saw these movies where these kings, they're bringing a gesture or whatnot? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you to put on a certain way to their liking, to please them, to the king. That's what the Lord did with us. 
Lord told us to mimic Israel. Okay, do what I remember. You know, put on the old garbs. Speak in the old tongue. Call on me in the, in the name. You know, that's equivalent to you saying put on. Like you're a king, you say, give me an exhibition. So the Lord wasn't going to deal with us being Americans. No, you had to emulate what the Lord is pleasing to the Lord. So that's why you had to come with a Hebrew name. You had to come with Hebrew slang. You had to come with the garb. And you have to uh, practice, you know, the the, uh, the customs of Israel, man. And especially as touching the priests, all right? Or what's that, uh, Ezra? Where Ezra began to, 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 to teach. He prepared his heart to teach. That that proved to be pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shah. Right, this is St. John. Hey, you can't six. do that with one foot in the world. Yeah, you can navigate in the world because you got to function, you got to get a job, do your thing, whatever, right? But but ultimately, you can't wholeheartedly hold fast to the world. I'm looking at this this fucking sick motherfucker right here, man. That shit just threw out my whole train of thought, man. That's, that's crazy, man. This nigga like Javonna, man. But um, yeah, in order for you to commit to your how about some y'all shot, you have to be ready to detach from the world in some shape, form, or fashion. For if nothing else, right, you're not gonna be able to function like that. If you just in the world, how you gonna be able to please your how about some y'all shot? Come on. Good. Uh St. John 6 and 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Right, there's no other way to go, man. See, this is our refuge. Come on. God, 2 Corinthians uh, 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, mm -hmm. and be ye separate. Right, this is what's required of you. How about some outside? You can't have one foot in the grave. Now again, are we in the world physically? Yeah, that's in the book of uh, Yahweh Shai wanted it that way. That was pleasing to the Heavenly Father through his son is touching the ordinance, man. That's why when you read St. John the 17th chapter, Yahweh Shai said what? Well, uh, I pray that you take them not out of the world, but keep them from the evil. That's the way the Lord wanted it. Nevertheless, right here in our mind, our reasoning, our outlook on things, it doesn't mess with the world. That's why you subject get into an argument with someone. All right, come on. I mean, I'm saying, I ain't said that's just our life. But if you was to entertain these people, it's like there's going to be some friction there. Because your reasoning, now you have to master, uh, and that's, a, that's a, a test, being in this truth. Yeah, you do have to master the art of being a, uh, a, a, a serpent. Yeah, you have yeah, you have to be able to blend in the world. Yeah. You could be looking at somebody like, man, where I get to take your head off. What you talk to him, yes, sir. <laughs> you think, Lord, I'll pass up a million dollars, you know, to get one swing at this nigga head. Like, come on. Uh, I was like, let me finish oh, that. Right, like, right. It says, What for come out from among them and be ye separate? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Say, yeah, he put too much into it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's trick, yeah. He put too much thought into it. It's role play pride, you know, it's yeah. sick out here in America. <laughs> man, that was, that was probably, he probably looking for that style on that shit. Oh, man. He probably looking for an old man. He's looking for an old man. It says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, mm -hmm. said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Right, meaning we are not to cleave unto anything outside of Yahweh Shah. Well, and I will receive you. And I will receive you. That's the conditions. That's the terms and conditions of the contract. You have to detach from the world, man. Now, it starts right here. Now, do, do you have to sometimes blend in, do certain things? Of course. You know? But as much as you have it, especially as we get closer and closer to the end, you have to be ready to let things go, man. Still in the spirit of your cousin. Yeah, yeah, uh, who got yeah, Colossians 3 and 12, put on therefore as the elect of the most high, mm -hmm. holy and beloved. Right, and when you put that, that, that's a phrase right there when you look it up, put on, it goes in the covering of garments, covering like 
a uniform. Oh, and that goes into the example I made about Yahweh Shah being the king, and you have to put on an exhibition form. Yeah, you have to put on an exhibition, put on as the elect. All right? Because the modern nigga is not pleasing to me. You have to put on, that's why the Lord said, seek for the old path. Well, it says, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, mm -hmm. meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Hamashiach forgave you, so also do ye. Right, so what's the point there? To put on as the elect, okay, which it goes into the qualities of the elect. Bowels of mercy, humbleness of mind, all right? So we have to walk that walk to the best of our ability and, and hope that it will be pleasing to the king. And he might say yes, you know, but it ultimately goes back to being a part of the elect. But even in that, you have to pursue your house shot, man. That's why the Lord said, uh, whoso not put down, his, take up his cross and follow me. You can't just be content and settle on your lead. No, you have to get up and walk the walk. And hopefully in hopes that how about some outside have mercy on you? Which is going to be needed more so more than ever, man. All right? We're about to go into very dark times. Literally. It's going to get dark. The Lord going to turn the power out out here in America. Fuck it. Yeah, Fuck it, nigga, man. Power watching the whole that's, that's what Esau produced. See, how was I produced, right? Oh, that's why the scripture said, I have come that they have my help. Life. Esau have come to destroy you. That's the results of Esau right there, man. A 6'3 nigga. In the bottom of the nigga look like a... That's why we got to get up out of here, man. All right? Yeah, yeah, because Esau got the technology to... Oh, they, did, did y'all do y'all remember the Nata Tayo guy? I know you probably remember him. <laughs> did y'all hear the, the documentary came out on him where he got catfished? Yeah, 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 and it was by a guy. And it fucked his whole life up because he was, you know, he was a young guy, he ain't not approach women in bars and college and shit. <laughs> and that was very creating that anxiety. So he he, he he was more comfortable. Going to instant messages. We ended up getting catfish and it was a dude, a six eight nigga, man. Right, yeah, go ahead, I, I got something real quick. This is Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, right. and from thy kindred, right, yeah, right. and from thy and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show, why I will show thee. So just as in we have to separate, guess what? The Lord only dealt with Abram after he separated from his kinsfolk. It says, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make my name great. Excuse me, I will make thy name great. And they're going to know the example. You might just start having the camera out that way, man. You see that? You see that shit? That's sick, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come, Genesis 12 and 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Right, so the Lord required of Abram to depart. He had to get thee from what? Get thee from thy country and from thy kindred. And from thy kindred. See? It proves that your family, hey, really, when we speak about the world, being in the world, it's played out through your family. Real talk, your family is the gateway to the world. You don't, you don't know people out here. The most people you deal with is your family. Your co-workers, how much percentage of that of your day? Or, or somebody, your neighbors. It's so much, but it's your family who knows you. It's your family that is sentimental values, their soft spots, that you might have a lapse. You don't even think about the scripture. You just, oh, it's... Mom, so you know what I mean? That's why the Lord requires you from depart from your kindred, man. Can we tell Abram? Yeah, that's what we read. That's what we oh, and, and you know what happened? Like, no, that's before his name was changed. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, come on. Book of Luke, chapter 9 and verse 23. That's from times. Off road time around nigga on that goddamn. Luke 9 and 23. And he said to them all, if, if 
<laughs> if any They'll lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Right. So, and that's going to actually spill over into uh, uh, the time of trouble, which is outlined in the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter, where the, the U.S. government is going to close in on you people, man. You're going to be forced to uh, switch over into a digital currency. The landscape of this place is going to change in effort to fulfill biblical prophecy. And in that day, your metal going to get tested. That's why I say, whosoever shall save his life. Now that is a maturation. It starts when you first come into the truth. And it might have been situations where you had a lucrative job opportunity, but it would have hindered you from performing the service of the Lord and fully committing to the ministry. So you had to make a decision. You had to choose your house, you know, you had to choose life. What scripture say the day I set before you? Yeah. But that's not the be all end all. That's gonna spill over into the time of trouble. You're going to be presented with the karate, and it's going to choose life or death. Is you going to look to save your life? That's it. Say something real quick. Mm -hmm. you got uh, uh, that's why when we read Luke the 14th chapter in the 26th verse, what Yahweh Shah said, and your own life also. And that comes with your life. The advantages that you uh, take advantage of in life, either you're going to take advantages of those, of those advantages, or you're going to trade them off for the spiritual advantages that you've been presented. That's the choice. Yeah. Right? So they would say, your life also. And then we read, uh, whoever so loses life, right, shall find it. And that's exactly what it means. You know, all your all your aspirations, you know, all like the brother said, all the things that get presented unto you. So that's why 25 says, for what, Luke 9 and 25, for what is a man's advantage? See that? Oh, If he gained the whole world and lose himself, Right, yeah, because this world is temporal, first and foremost. It's nothing more than a mist, a shadow that's here today and gone tomorrow. So, so what if a man gained this? The perks that come with this world. As considering the elites, these, these bankers, they pretty much have everything at their disposal, man. Their disposal, should I say. But what is that when, when their life is but a shadow? See, what we, what we fight for up here is immortality, man. All right, come on. Huh? It says, if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away. See that, man? So what's the prize of Howard Shah? Which is manifest in the form of retaining this information and continuing to operate in the spirit. All right? You, hey, that's how we always say. You back at camp? Man, that's a beautiful thing. You know? <clears throat> that's like that step. You know, you take it. Because, hey, when you first come into this thing, you run it, you know, you, you, you running into it. But now we know we at the end because each step is like a, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And, and, and the struggle is during the week. And that step is when you make it back to camp, man. And, and continuing here in the uh, in, in the laboring of your how about some other side. See, without, without being in this arena, then you're numbered to the sword. That's why the scripture speaks about the congregation of the dead. See, the, hey, your resources is not going to stand up against prophecy. You know, you got an account, or you might have, uh, uh, you might have access to food. Hey, these elites, they got access to certain resources in the planet Earth. And no wise would that negate prophecy. Come on. All right, so let's go back to that. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and follow thee. Right, so we have forsaken all and follow thee. Signs. So, oh, no, no, no. You, you get the signs, bro. Yeah, he's still. Okay. That's 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 okay. That's
Right, so there's a reward, you know, that comes with, um, yep, there's a reward that comes with forsaking all and committing to your house side, man. Hey, and guess what? That reward is going to uh, be manifest even on this side, before the kingdom of heaven in the physical manifestation of the perks, if you will. Guess what? When the said perils, right? When the said perils is amongst you, the drought, the famine, once it rests and settles in America, you people are going to succumb to prophecy. All right? The only ones who are going to be preserved from those Salakia plagues is the elect of the nation of Israel. All right? Point blank, period. Come on. Con, that word forsaken, Strong's G, 88, excuse me, 863, it says to, to let go, let alone let be. Right, so when you forsake all, you let be. Even if it was close friends. Now, with that said, you might have certain situations where people might be a benefit to you. Then in no wise do you let them go, you know, as long as they ain't hindering you from doing the work. Wisdom. Yeah, wisdom, yep. Yeah. But if there are situations where, look, it's not convenient, it's not meat for you to be in that same atmosphere, right? Yeah. Then you gotta cut that off. You can't even think twice about it. Because the prize is your how was shot, man. And really when we say that, when we say the prize is your how was shot, we saying the prize is salvation. Because when you go into the name your how was shot, what does it mean? He who delivers or he who saves. So it all makes sense to cleave to your how was shot. Seeing that he's the door, he's the portal to salvation and being preserved. Come on. Huh? It says to let go, let alone. Right, you have to let some people alone. You might have to let go of a job. You have to let alone things that you was doing in the world because it, it, in no wise could it coexist with the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. It says to give up. Right, you had to give up certain things. See, and only a real man will operate like that. Because these guys who get over emotional when they hear the report, it's based upon that loving death. You playing footsie at home. And you comfortable with, you know, the perks. You don't want to come out here on the highways and byways and lay it out on the line and make that hard stance for your house shot. But guess what? When you read the story, it tells you for an example, what's that second uh, Ezra, the second chapter? It speaks about those who stood so stiffly, man. And how they would be the ones to not only be crowned, but receive palm. You know how heavy that is, man? Let's talk about overcoming the advances of this beast system. When this man rolled out the karagma in the form of that digital, that, that, that chip, man. When this man invades your homes under the cover of darkness, because this is a coup, man. The, the, uh, 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 the elites, they, they ready to just uh, step their rightful ownership in their mind because they know that, the, what's that, uh, Wisdom of Solomon, where they said, uh, let, let his word yeah. his word. No, not that, where they said, let not the flowers Oh yeah, the, uh, that, or the seeds pass by us. Yeah. Right, because they know that they got dominion. So they like, man, the hell with it. I'm not going to keep playing it off with you. It's time to move into the next phase of our diabolical plan. And that's to establish and crown this new world order a, a, a success. But guess what? You have been searched out by your how about sitting outside. They're playing no game. That way. You have been searched out by your how about Simi Awasai. Now we know your plans. Oh, remember, uh, Alyssa, when you go into the records, we have heard, all right, the, the things you utter in your bed chambers. And we know that you are looking to establish a system on the planet Earth that's contrary to the ordinance of your how about Simi Awasai. So many so, so it's going to provoke the Holy One uh, to walk. I like what? Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, mm -hmm. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Right, and that's the time. Now it's heavy, an hour. Hey, in the pose of a day, right? Let's say if I give you a day to do something, it's not that much stress. You know, it doesn't create a sense of urgency. But if I say an hour, now you're more attentive. You're more aware of, oh, I got a few more minutes. The ball rolling in there. In a day, you ain't got to get up and start getting ready. So it's going to be a time where it's going to close in on you. 
It's not going to be broad. Oh, like the Apostle Hall always say, you're going to know when you're in the time of Jacob's trouble. You're going to know when you're in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know how to wait. That's why the, we ain't going to be out there when Jacob's trouble upon you. Now you get an uh, 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 alert. We just went into Jacob's trouble, Akim. That's the title. <laughs> no, you know, you're going to know that. At 345, Jacob's trouble came on upon us. Now you don't know. All right, come on. Uh, it says, Behold, Salakia, because uh, Revelation 3 and 10 again, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Yep, go ahead. Which shall come upon all the world. Yeah, that's why this is a global system. The NFC, the RFID, right? I hope I hope that's not a trigger word. Yeah, but hey, the truth is very offensive to the devil, man, because it serves as a mirror, so to speak. And we, it's, it's a reflection of who you are. All right, we know that to Esau. All right, come on. It says, which shall come upon all the world to try them uh -huh. that dwell upon the earth. See? So that's the time we're about to go into. Go ahead. That was it on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can go back. Come back in that word forsaken. It says, to depart from anyone. Oh, read that again. To depart from anyone. So you have to be ready to depart from mother, father, brother, sister, children. That's the extent of how far the, the testimony of Yahweh Shai go. And it might sound excessive, right? But hold up. The Lord, we, we have the information to know everything is reincarnated. Just like when we're going to go back there, and we're going to go to the book of Job, the Lord is going to reward us back everything that we sacrificed all right so to the naked eye to those uh, of you mere mortals if you will when i say that those of you operate under the flesh well when you see us at face value you don't see the reward in it if anything you view and assess us as just another uprising this grown so-called negroes latinos and native americans crying out for justice which is an element to that all right but ultimately, what you're witnessing is a transition of power, man. When the scriptures speak about the poor and lowly being raised up and the high and lofty and exalted being a face, that's talking about this current beast system, the UN, the EU, the European Union, that world domination being brought low and the poor being raised up. Yeah, this is the book of uh, St. Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 27. It's going back to what you said. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a reward. It. it says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all. Yeah, and that's what we read. Going back to the devil. Yeah, that's exactly what we said. Yeah, yeah, that's what he read. You read, yeah? Oh, oh no, go ahead, come on, come on. Yeah. You know how the spirit works, yeah. The spirit wanted to come out. Yeah, come on. And follow me. What shall we have therefore? Yeah, so let's go back to the definition. Good. It says, uh, to depart from anyone. And so anyone. that proves if you're paying attention, to follow your Howard side comes with sacrifice. All right? To follow the God of the Bible comes with sacrifice. See, Christianity teaches you what? You can follow the God of the Bible under your terms. You can still eat pork. All right? You can still eat pork chops, all right? But you can, but the Lord love it. And that pork, it, it, it uh, yeah, 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 see that pork, it distorts your thinking. That's why you feel emotional. Because you own the pork, you under the influence. All right, go ahead. Cause it's under the influence. Under the influence of the Under the influence. Under the, under the, under the, under the, under the, uh, you, uh. Uh, 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 IUP. UIP, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Under the influence of pork. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> and it affects their reasoning. All right? But the Lord, oh, the scripture said, the Lord never gave no man license to sin. Okay? Instead, there's a grace period that the Lord has allowed for his, his chosen, the elect of the nation of Israel, to hear his word, believe on the report, and be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, give me that in Ephesians. And you know what? We're going to go to the blue letter on that. All right, come on. Up. It says to depart from one. Right, we had to depart from one, one way or another. Certain brother's stories are more excessive 
It says important. It says important. That was bad. Well, wait a Beware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be mindful of. Be mindful. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have certain aspects where it was more excessive. Certain brothers had to walk away from family, man, to serve your how about some hours shop. They might have had to walk away from jobs, all right? At the surface, it just looked like, you know, you just see certain brothers, but spiritually, you don't know what uh, uh, certain brothers in, in, in their uh, uh, walk, they'll walk right. As touching what's required of them. There's certain brothers that might feel more indebted to you. How much that you can imagine? Go ahead, huh? It says to depart from That's one. why you have to be careful with your assessment of how brothers labor. And don't get into all that. that he, the, oh, the scriptures say that uh, uh, don't be Lord over another man's sheep. So, I mean, I went, you know, hey, each brother got their walk, man. Don't dive into all that, okay? Come on. It says to depart from one. Mm -hmm and leave him to himself. Right, so you might have to depart from your siblings and you have to lead them to their self, lead them alone to follow your house shot. Come on. So that all mutual claims are abandoned. Right, see, if you're uh, a mutual claim, you abandon it. Matter of fact, that word abandoned heaven. Matter of fact, continue that. Uh, Go to the one with that one. You can't, it says, on, uh, can't. <laughs> it says, to leave so that what is left may remain. Right, yeah, did you leave it be, is it, you know? That's why the scripture speaks about being called out of darkness into this marvelous light. That dark, who told you about Christmas? Your family, man. See, so you would operate under how they, what they presented. So when you was called out of darkness, you really were called out from amongst your family, man. Which, which same you, that's the, the follow. Right, the the, uh, uh, the the misinformation and disinformation that we have been sold and being made subject to. All right. Yeah, yeah, come on, let me get that. We'll go back. It says, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. God, there. This is the book of First Peter uh, four, and uh, I started at three. For yep, the time yep. past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Right, yeah, you were celebrating Christmas, you were showing reverence to these holidays, which has no merit with the Holy Scriptures. It's not, Christmas is not in harmony with the Holy Scriptures. All right, Easter, that's not in harmony with the Holy Scriptures. Fourth of July, Halloween, those are all customs that's contrary to, to the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Ba'a Shem Yahweh Shah. Go ahead, it says, when we walk in lasciviousness. Right, we walk in lasciviousness. Go ahead. Lust. Lust. Excess of wine. Uh huh. Revelings. Yeah. Banquetings. Banquetings. Yeah. <laughs> Men in the club and all that. You know. He jacked up, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, a traditional beer. But like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> traditional American beer. Coke yeah, Coke Boy. Yeah, Coke Boy. Coke Boy. Coke Boy. Coke Boy. Coke Boy. Coke yeah, that was designed to activate the nigga in you. Like, yeah, all the, yeah. Yep. Yep, come on. It says banquetings and abominable idolatries. Right, yep, go ahead. Wherein they think it's strange. Right, so your people who you ran with, matter of fact, read that again. Wherein they think it's strange. Go ahead. That you run not with them. That you run not with them. See, so you don't run with your, your cousin no more, all right? Or old family members, even your siblings, siblings your brother, close, your sister, maybe, even your parents. And, and it, it goes into levels, of course. Some brothers might have to sacrifice more than others. Nevertheless, that was a sacrifice with each and every member, all right? The sincere member of your house, man, in the body. <laughs> Whether it was even something applying to yourself the way you thought things should be or your outlook, you had to put that in subjection. Nevertheless, to follow your house shot, you have to uh, unload that baggage. Or oh, like the camel, the camel, see about the camel hard for a camel to enter into the eye. Yep, that needle, that's really the entrance of the city. And what happens with those camels? They are bought out. 
Yeah. Well, usually, they, what, what, what happens is they really unload them. That's it. You have to unload the camel for them to go in. And that goes until you have to let go of things. Yeah, mm. yeah that's the aspect. You got to get rid of all what you, you got to get rid of that baggage. You can't come in here with that love, Christianity BS. Hey, hey, You're going to get cussed clean out. <laughs> hey, hey, what you have a shot said? Sell all that you have? Yep, that's it. Sell all that you have. Oh, you got that? Oh, okay. You have to unload. Yeah. You have to unload, bro, and reload with the spirit. That's putting off the old man. Mm. All that baggage. You can't subconsciously bring that baggage into this arena. Hey, because what's going to happen? Because you could be a part of the elect and do that, but you, that's going to be, that fat going to be trimmed off. Trust me. That's going to be checked. That's going to be checked. And the Lord going to trim that fat off, bro. Trust me, you're not going to do well with that. In this arena. Uh, yeah, come on, get this. Uh, it's Luke chapter 14, verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he have. Right, yep, you have to forsake all that you have, or for nothing else, be willing to. That's why there's so much friction that comes with the true believers of the Bible. But, but <laughs> yeah, and that's why, for an example, Christianity is a world-friendly doctrine. That's the first red flag because Yahweh was rejected, even of his own people, man. Why? Because there was an authoritative overtone to the Bible, not a going along to get along like. Oh, but you did have that pimp. Oh, you saw the video with the dude cussed out the congregation. Oh yeah, yeah. That nigga said, "Man, I ain't worth a watch." And then you had them crazy <laughs> Yeah, he cussed out. He said, y'all a bunch of broke. He cussed his congregation out. Y'all a bunch of broke, busted, and disgusting. But now, yeah, hold up. This is this the kicker. The, the, the congregation was, yes. Yeah, that was, was co-signed of the man. Yeah, yeah. As he was talking, he was getting cash out. Fuck him, man. That's not in harmony with the testimony of Yahweh Shai. All right? The Spirit of the Lord, once it descends upon the planet Earth, which we are the prophets, when you go into the Bible, it promotes reincarnation. You're dealing with the prophets of old. That's one of the strange works of the God of the Bible. Oh, for an example, remember John the Baptist? That was written in the records, not for entertainment, but for the wise to consider. When they asked John, they said, well, are you the... Why would they ask him that? Why was, that, why was that in the record? Are you Elijah? What they asked, was he Elijah, right? And he said, no, I'm not. But he was Elijah. But the reason why he said he wasn't was because of the, what the scriptures say. What's that? Ecclesiastes? Yeah. There are no remembrance of former things. So in a subtle act of power, the Lord slipped the prophets out. And he sent us as common men, as in the ancient world. So much so that when you give us dirty looks and... But it's been recorded in the heavens. Yeah. And they go choke off a, a hard windy fry. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, DJ Kelly. Yeah, that guy look crazy. Yeah, that was like DJ Kelly. He cut him off. Uh, All right, come on. Well, back at that definition. Khalid Kelly. Khalid Kelly. He got a, a, a jacket. You know what I'm saying? For real stuff. He's crazy little cousin, man. Watch, watch, watch. Back in the definition for forsaken. It says to leave one by not taking him as a companion. Right. You, we, we left our family members behind. And we didn't, in certain cases where brothers come in or you might bring a cousin in or your father. In certain cases with brothers, uh, the, the brother and his son. Right? But it's far in between, man. Usually what happens, well, that's in the book of, um, I'm going to say this. Is that Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah. Yep, the third chapter. Yep, somebody can hold that on. Make sure you got that job as well. All right? Because the Lord, in, in his visitation, it centers around separation. That's the overtone of being holy, man. That word holy has been completely taken out of its proper context. All right? When, when you people, when you, when you Babylonians out here, and you hear that word holy, your perception is an old lady, you know? <laughs> Who will bake you a <laughs> right? Yeah. No, man, that word holy means to be separate, all right? That's the first steps, if you will, on his road to recovery. Before the Lord actually 
preserve you from the said perils, he has to pick you out. That what happened with Noah. That the ark represented, it was a symbol of separation. And that separation dictated those who would be delivered versus those who would be destroyed. All right, come on. This is Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. Turn, O black backsided children, said the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city. Right, sometimes. Yeah, the Lord said he would take us one of a city, right? Go ahead. And two of a family. Right, and two of a family. So the Lord is not going to take the whole family or the whole city. No, he's going to take one or two from it, man. All right, come on. And, and and I will bring you to Zion. And I will bring you to Zion. You know? And that process is now being, being manifest in the form of the gathering. All right? Of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those of us who were scattered and driven from our land. And what cemented that? How we know that was us? It's because we lost sight of who we were. We was we detached from our, um, what does it say? Uh, discontinued from your heritage? Mm -hmm. What's that, Jeremiah the fourth chapter? As projected. Okay, so everything fell just as the scripture said it would. But now we're in the time of the gathering. And guess what? We're not here to convince. We don't care about nobody. You know, for the sincere in this arena, in the congregation on the line, online, and for the brothers out here, we're not here to convince you. We pull out a map, a world map. <laughs> Fuck all that, man. <laughs> all right, come on. Back in that definition for forsaken. It says, leave behind one. Right, we're gonna leave behind anyone or anything in pursuit of your Howard shot. And guess what, if that don't register with you, then that means you don't understand what's going on anyway. You get all messed up about that, it's cool, that means you just don't understand. The Lord's been expounding unto you the, the things that was hidden from generations, all right? Come on. It says, abandon, mm -hmm. leave destitute. Right, abandon, that's a heavy word. So really, the overtone of abandonment, of abandonment, comes with following Yahweh Shah. You have to abandon certain people. And it makes sense because if the house is on fire, mm -hmm. I can only do so much before I just leave, man. I'm gone, I mean, because your instinct of survival is going to kick in. You busy flipping out the window. Once you get out, then I might think about who left. Like this. <laughs> they were, they were abandoned, simple Google definition. Uh -huh. It says, cease to support. Oh, Ooh. what? Cease to support. Cease to support, man. That's heavy, man. Wow. Yeah, cease to support, man. Go ahead. Or look after. Or look after. You might have to do that in certain cases. Now, you got to understand that doesn't apply to every brother's situation. If you got your family that's, that's not hindering you from doing the work, you don't just use that as your cue to cut them off. Right? Go ahead. It says, give up completely. Yeah, because I know I made that mistake. And my zeal coming in the truth, I was cutting motherfuckers out left and right. But it was still the will of the Lord. But you know, just looking back at retrospect, certain certain of them, I can think of probably two right now that could have benefited me in certain things about the Because the scriptures say use the world. But see, that's what happens. You come in, that zeal, but you take your lump. That's what a kid will do. A kid, you see what your father do. Now you want to jump out there, you know, and then, you, you get a scratch. All right, come on. Okay, uh, some of the similar words. You playing construction <laughs> with the toys and shit. And, and you, you know, you mishandle it. But in your zeal, you're trying to mimic, you know. But hopefully brothers who just coming in, take heed to that, all right? Um, if you have certain resources that can benefit you, whether it's old friends or whatnot, by, by no means cut them off if they're not going to hinder your work because the Lord might set them up to be a, a, a you know a support system for you. Go ahead. Similar words is relinquish, mm -hmm. disclaim, discard. Yep, discard. That's the spirit you in. When you really tap into your house shot, you really discard everything else. Now even again, if the flesh, because you're in the flesh, that demon riles up, you start thinking about you know that memory demon or whatnot. Well. At the end of the day, or you might even think like, damn, you know, my family could easily succumb to the famine or old family members, they might get caught up out there. Well, what's the comfort? You're going to receive it all back, man. That's when you really go into the in-depthness of the promises. 
because you can easily just peer out into the future and say, yeah, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to blah, blah, blah. But what about now? The Lord promised that he's going to preserve the elect, man. All right, come on. Matthew 29 and 22. So you got to be ready to let everything else go. You got to, if you take up your cross, you got to drop everything else. Well, Matthew 19 and 28. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, mm -hmm. when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And again, that's the emphasis on rulership. It goes to the judgment, not holding hands with everybody. All right? No, there's going to be a changing of the guard, a transition of power. And, and a part of the premises is to have dominion. Go ahead. And every one that have forsaken houses, See, go ahead. or brethren, uh -huh. or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake. Now, uh, did you catch that? Let's read it again. Come. And every one that have forsaken houses, go ahead. or brethren, or brethren, or sisters, or sisters, or father, uh -huh. or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, uh -huh. for my name's sake. Right, so the Lord named eight things. Out of the eight, six of them was family. <laughs> Out of the eight, six of them was family, man. So that proves that's what ultimately you have to walk away from. Let's go back to that Genesis, the 12th chapter. Okay. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord, Yahweh said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred. See, and from thy kindred. So in order for you to fully commit to Yahweh, see, the Lord knows Jake. This is a family oriented nation. That's why you have cookouts and big mama's house on yeah. Sundays. Right? The Lord know that. So what's one of the, the, the rites of passages, if you will, to test your Lord? You got to be ready to walk away from your family for Yahweh Shah. And why wouldn't you? That's an easy trade-off. Seeing Yahweh Shah produces life. He can bring them back. He can kill them. You choose them over Yahweh Shah, he say, I'm going to just kill them then. Yes. When you can say, okay, I'll choose you, Yahweh Shah. And even if you kill them, he can bring them back. <laughs> See? And we're going to get into that. Go ahead. Good. It says, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house. See, and from thy father's house. The Lord required for Abram to detach from his kindred in his father's house. Which which Abram's father was uh terror. Right. And he was he was into other doctrines, man. Oh yeah, come on. Okay, this is the book of Luke, uh, 9 and verse 59. Mm -hmm. And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. <laughs> yeah, how I said unto him. Oh, yeah, bury your father. Go ahead. Yeah, how I said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of the Most High. Right, yeah. So just because you throw like a name up, it, it, you think that folks to strike a nerve in your house. Oh, my father, oh, my mama, your house. Oh, I don't want to hear all that. In your little work mind, you put stock into your family. But that doesn't apply over here. You got to be ready and willing to drop everything for your house side, man. Simple as that. Here it is. You want your house side to work miracles for you in the time of the family. But you ain't willing to walk away from family for your house side. Or job. Or opportunities here in this fucking system, man. That's why your how about some outside gonna be justified in visiting you with those strange plagues. Remember, uh, like dog patches and shit, they real touchy. All right, come on. He says, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first bid them farewell, which are at my house. Right, yeah, so you showing a sentimental, there's a sentimental value with with your family, man. All right? The Lord requires you all the way. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's heavy, bro. You can't make it up, bro. The symbol of a, yeah. Straight up, bro. Come on, man. Call all your how about some outside, man. Yeah, three gentlemen, yeah. That's it. 
in, in that circle, man, you love, you know, there's a strong feeling of love. Like, come on. They'll never follow you out. Every shadow is a symbol of Yeah. Yep, yep. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Verse 62. And Yahweh Shah said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, he's fit for the kingdom of the Right, and that's heavy too, because um, to look back, that goes into where you came from. But what's to look for? Prophesying. That's why I said look back. What's the extreme? What's the other extreme besides looking back? Looking forward. So you have to be in, in, gut, in the testimony of the house shot. See, once you're looking forward, once you anticipate all hell to break you, then you don't even, it's not even right for you to even uh, want to be with your family because they, they done. What they subscribe to is going to uh, uh, submit their... Hey, look, man, I'm... Uh, man, look, man. This is fucking ridiculous, man. This nigga look like he should be a middle inside line, bro. And he got a poodle, man. And the nigga might be a fucking football player. That, that, that nigga... Uh, yeah, he get... Yeah. For flair, yeah, he... Yeah. Unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. Oh, I was saying nigga spirit. Know the picture that nigga uh, Cannon Gates. Y'all see how he poses? I think he could be a brawl, man. When you kind of look at him, a brawl, a, a guy can't pose like that. You know? Guy can't pose like that. Yeah, this, this I'm trying to tell you, bro. That's why this is the Babylonian experience. All right? Who have seen such a thing, man? This nigga got his hair fixed. Yeah, he said he sat down and got that shit. This nigga is. Yeah, man. Yeah, shit. He secured that flag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Different facets hey, of flares, man. The opposites of flares. Yeah. Yeah, man. See. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 19 and 29, and everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters. Yeah, read that again. And everyone that have forsaken houses uh -huh. or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife. So you see the thing? Brothers, sisters, you know, family. Out of, out of the eight things that I was trying name, six of them were family. Go ahead. It says, or children, See? or lands, for, for my name's sake, yep, go ahead. shall receive a hundredfold. See, and that's the comfort. You're going to receive a hundredfold, man. So this is not just a, 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 a spark. You know, we just out here teaching. It's going to fizzle out. There's no reward. No, it's going to be a reward for this. Hey, and even for you believers. Uh, what's that? Matthew, the 10th mm -hmm. chapter? It speaks about uh, 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 receiving a, a prophet's reward. And a righteous man reward, which goes back to your house side. He's that prophet and righteous man, but it's funneled, it's, it's, it's channeled, if you will, through the ministry, man. Like that little Christian came up. Come out, your house side. But he said, he kept saying the J word. He said, but well, that was the last prophet. But why are you talking about that? Hmm. Well, let's just read ourselves then. If that's the, you know. All right, go ahead. Something real quick. Hebrews 10 and 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, mm -hmm. which have great recompense of reward. That's it. And that word recompense goes into payback. So you are not to cast off your confidence. Hey, it's going to get bad out here, bro. Real talk, man. Like, sometimes you got to really meditate. Matter of fact, get, uh, meditate on it. Get this. Get, the hand. get that. I was bringing it out to you. Like, certain scenarios, you got to think about it. Like, how will I hold up, you know? You think about ruling. But what about if a lion pop up? Hey, because it, we're going to get into them times, man. Yeah, you, you think about, yeah, how many thrones and shit, you know, how your house going to be in the kingdom, your mansion. But you overlook, right? How you going to operate, how you going to function when, when you up the close and personal with, uh, what's that, First Corinthians, the third chapter? The day shall declare your work. Goddamn bear papa. Oh, y'all saw the video with the bell busting in the house? Oh, yeah, Your door ain't gonna stop a bell. And that's, that's show you the psyche, the psyche on some people. Ooh. You're gonna be just operating under folly. And you're not gonna even operate under reality. So you're gonna be running to get to your house. 
as if that door, that little wooden door, gonna stop up there. And you're gonna believe that. You're gonna close the door, you're gonna get in there. And the bag gonna bust in the door, man. All right, go ahead. Good. Uh, Matthew 19 and 29, and every one that have forsaken houses or brothers. Oh, it's like it. Uh huh, let's get this out Ecclesiastes 18, verse 23. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself. Right, before thou prayest, before thou prayest, prepare thyself. Hey, see, that applies to us now, man. Because, you know what? Well, that, that wouldn't have made sense when you, was in, when you wasn't in the truth. So it was meant for now. So meaning what? We have been briefed on what's about to come to the planet Earth. Right, we have been briefed on what the Lord is about to do. So now we can prepare what to pray for. We can we, we prepare our mind to, to pray to the Lord to keep us from the famine that's approaching. From Esau military, man, when he round your ass up and throw you in them concentration camps. And, and you can't stand in there. All right, go ahead. Huh? The element of stun gonna go away too, man. You know how that, you know? Go ahead. It says, before thou prayest, prepare thyself, mm -hmm. and be not as one that tilted the Lord. Yep, go ahead. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. Right, think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. It says, in the time of vengeance, when he shall turn away his face. See that? So that's what we should meditate on in this truth, man. All right? I mean, you're not going to be consumed with it all day, every day. But, hey, if you're in this thing, you truly understand what's going on, you should be meditating on the famine. You should be meditating on the scenario. And in that, you like you pray to the Lord. Lord. Hey, because sometimes you think about it, it should be like, oh, like a reality check, like a culture shock. It's not like on that uh, final destination. The broad, it, the vision looks so real. It's snap back. That's how it is. You meditate. Some of that, some scenarios be real. You can hope. But then now you know what to pray for. Oh Lord, please keep it. Please, y'all about to come. You see what I'm saying? That's what this thing about, man. Being briefed on you, how about some outside? Oh, what's that? Hebrews the eleventh chapter? It says you at Noah. Noah heard the report and was moved with fear. See? So we don't just speak about, we not just teach about what's about to happen. You gotta meditate on. You gotta believe it. Yeah, that's on hell, man. So now what? Now this this shift you into that gear of praying, you know, for pardon for the Lord to pardon you, man, and hopefully that His favor might be shown to you, bro. Cause it's gonna get bad. Hey, just imagine when the power go out. Your power go out even now. You know it's gonna come. It can come back on, and you still feel a little like, you know, at ease. You know, that. Yeah, they turn this motherfucker back on. So imagine when the power out is, and it's nobody. Yeah, we're going to see all you guys be standing with all this power. You're going to be just like us in that day. You're going to be on the phone waiting on <laughs> Carmelo Anthony. You're going to be on the phone. I mean, I ain't knocking nobody. Particular. You might be watching, bro. I ain't knocking. I'm just using you as an example. I'm just saying, right? And if it is, you the hell with it, bro. <laughs> I'm just saying. You, you're not going to, your status is not going to somehow separate you from the uh, visitation of your house by standing outside. You don't have a uh, uh, food supply. What, what I mean is resources concerning food. You know, you don't control the food supply or have an input. The power. When your, when your uh, uh, condo go out or wherever your summer house power go out, you're going to jump on your phone just like all of us. And you're going to call the power company and be on hold. <laughs> Show you, man, just with a one twinkle, right? Just one motion, the Lord can change everything, man. And he's going to change. All right, come on. Uh, hey, uh, yeah. Or that perplexity, too. Yeah. It, it, it's like you it. When you go into that perplexity, yeah. it goes into not having answers. Yeah. See, money is not going to create answers. Oh, what the scripture, uh, that, that gold shall not deliver them in that day. Come on. Uh, Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 22. And suddenly shall the mm. sown places appear unsown, yep. and the full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. Right, uh, Come. 
So uh, as they are doing the on, it's gonna catch these people off guard. It's gonna catch them unawares because they're not looking, all right, for the things that are, are coming upon the planet Earth. Just as uh, the money is not gonna be able to deliver you in that time, all right, guess what? The food ain't gonna be able to deliver you in that time because it's gonna be nothing to eat, man. You're gonna no. really have to clean, like the elder brother said earlier, you're gonna really have to clean to your house by shower time. Yeah, I remember uh, Apostle Rumla brought this point out of heaven. You're going to get to a point where you're going to be begging for your house out again. See, right now, you know, we just, yeah, going through the motion of the spirit, of course, right? It's not in vain. It's all according to the will of Yahweh's mouth shot. But you're going to, it's going, everything going to intensify. When you're in those situations, you're going to be like, you're going to be wishing, the oh, Lord, please, you know? Yeah. Hey, that's how, uh, uh, uh. The, the law speak about in the day, uh, if, if it was night, I wish it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's gonna, it's going to be an element to that, yeah. Because uh, the nighttime, you know, it's comfort that comes when the day, you know. You've been running all night. So, you know what I mean? That's spirit. See that? Yeah, yeah. See that? Yeah, yeah. They, they was running for that. You see that, man? Go ahead. I got something real quick. This is Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. If thou faint, in the day of adversity, uh -huh. thy strength is small. That's it, man. And there is a day of adversity. And this is what's going to separate the men from the boys, so to speak. Especially at Karaga. Well, according to the scriptures, those of us who have this information, we're going to we're gonna stand in that day. Oh, what's that? Isaiah the 33rd chapter. The sixth verse. Knowledge of wisdom shall be the stability of thy time. See? All right, come on. That was it? Uh-huh. Ecclesiastes uh, 5 and 7, make no chariots to turn to the Lord. Yep, and put not all from day yeah, to day. Yeah, and these scriptures, man, they're coming more and more to life. Because the clock, hey, you know, let's say like if you have a notice, right? And, it's, it, and, and the next notice is a, a disruption, a, a threat to disrupt your service. Let me start saying the letters in red. You know? Well, it's gonna be a point where you gotta you gotta address it. See, that's what we about to get into. We about to get into that time. Well, it's high time to wake out of sleep now. From day to day, that's that put off from day to day. That's that process aspect. Like again, if you're getting letters, you know, this day and that day, that's you putting off from day to day. This glaring report, you know it's there. And the letters start getting read and shit. They got urging on it now. And you put it off from day to day. Then suddenly the power is off. All right, that's good. Let's be there again. That's, 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 that's what it is now. With your how about some other stuff. Each day the sunrise and sunset is one day closer to the uh, services being disrupted. You got to address that level now. Read that again. God. It says, make no charity to turn to the Lord mm -hmm. and put not off from day to day. Yep, go ahead. For suddenly <laughs> shall the wrath of the Lord, you how about Shemel Shah, come forth. Mm -hmm. Oh, come forth. That, that's like a, that scene. Yeah, the Lord can change the whole scene. Now the scene is a death scene. <laughs> mm -hmm. That comes forth in your walk. Now, that next day is a death scene, you know? And the Lord prepared us. That's the dangers, the hidden dangers that comes with not listening to the uh, warning. Yep, come on. Man, I can't stand them fucking more. Man. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what brother put that up, where that nigga came out and said he hate uh, Native Americans and more about I hate Native Americans because they nasty and dirty. Y'all saw that? Then he said, they said, well, who the top people you hate? He said, it's black man. Fucker, man. And the crowd went wild. And it was to see the black nigga see the a Jake stood up. It was all the spit. Y'all didn't see that yeah, part? Yeah. But Jake stood up like he was going to get busy. Yeah, yeah, he then the he staff. said, ah, he was choking and shit with everybody. The yeah, he was on the staff. Yeah, yeah man, Moab, all the fucking nations really proud as hell, man. Yeah. Yeah, because Elon like that. Elon, see, but they, these, them, them fucking nations, they be watching, they saw the 12 year, they saw documentaries too. But their proud outlook is dead. Y'all niggas ain't, you know. You know, they, you work in a certain establishment, Elon might come in there and speed you up, man. Hurry up. 
motherfucker, man. Hey, tell you to hurry up and make the order. Yeah. But hey, to be honest with you though, right? They they got they got uh, uh, a point when considering you fucking two thirds, man. You niggas is is fucking the worst. Yeah. Hey, because we look at we another nation. We look at you niggas. I was at the brewery, you know what I mean? And the niggas, was that was y'all the niggas in the Caprice? It was like the Caprice Club rolled by, man. And 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 the, and the Edomites were looking at them crazy. We were looking at them crazy too, like fucking like niggas, man. Yeah, cause they, they we're another nation too. But really, when you think about those uh, those those fucking heathen, right? They really respect when you when you look at them like a piece of shit. They they really they kind of respect them. You said, man, fuck you. Yeah, that spirit of fuck you, motherfucker. They they really look down on that sucking, jiving. Uh, uh, junk nigga, fish fry spirit. Cause we hate that too. That's good. Huh? Like, sucking and jiving nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Okay. God, he says, make no terror to turn to the Lord and put that off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord, how by smell shall come forth. And that's how the plague is going to descend upon the planet Earth. It's going to be suddenly, man. It's going to be an element of suddenness. With, with the uh, drama that you have about your mouth. It's already prepared. That's what makes it, that will intensify, that dramatizes. Somebody waiting on you in the bushes. Mm -hmm. That's gonna, uh, you know what I mean? It's bad enough you're gonna get put to death with this. Rah! You know, element. That's how the Lord got the plague waiting on your ass, you know? Well. It says, and in that security, that shall be destroyed. Amen. Right, and that security is what? That's that false uh, sense of security. That, what, what did it say? And that's good. We've been bringing that up about how a snare, that's what it represents. A snare itself represents security. That's what lure you in. A fucking rat, when they see that cheese, what draws them to the snare itself is the security. You know, to eat. So that's how the Lord gonna get you, man. It's gonna seem as if, right, you, you actually got access to whatever food, drink, and really luxuries, because that's pretty much what you have been given out here in America. Remember, America was set up to feed the flesh. That's why the call is to wet, to, to uh, draw more into the spirit. The spirit got to win some of those battles. Yeah, it's a battle, but you can't concede, yeah, man, the flesh. You got to get out of this bitch with Satan, you know? Hey, yeah, sometimes, yeah, it's Satan, but it, it could be you. It, it could be a self-inflicted wound. You just got to be circumspect and aware. But ultimately, the spirit got to win some battles. You can't be just a time. Every time the flesh, the, it, the result is the flesh wound. You got to win some of them battles. You got to walk away from that battle like, yeah. Spirit, you know, I operate the spirit over king. So America was set up to put you into a false sense of security. That's why the message is so far. Because you're so secure. We tell you a famine coming, and that don't register with you because of your daily coming and going up and down in the city. The Wendy's is always accessible. All right, come on. It's uh, the book of James. Chapter one. And that clown pulled out James. Uh, let's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my. Now, them the worst kind of Christians, like the more sophisticated you will, but they know a couple of precepts. Hmm. Well, uh, James chapter one and 13, it says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the most high. Right, yep, go ahead. Or the most high can cannot be tempted with evil, uh -huh. neither tempt he any man, but Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. See, your own lust, that what draws you to the trap. So if your lust is to kick it in America, then now you're going to be, that's going to be your pursuit. You're going to pursue that. you drawn into America. That's why, give me that real quick. Uh, uh, you said, and in tight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. see that? 
So you're, the reason why you come up against this word, right, is because really your lust and, and your... got an infinity for America, all right? Your universe centers around America. That's why the scripture say what it says. You were drawn away by your own lust, all right? Go ahead. It says, then when lust have conceived. <laughs> yep, see, that's the thumbnail. It's the title. Then when lust have conceived, yeah, the thumbnail, you have a circle around the pool. Go ahead. It bringeth forth <laughs> sin. <laughs> Yeah. Sin. Oh, is it what? And bring it forth sin. And bring it forth sin. Right, because now you were drawn away to this lust. Yeah, see that? And you uh, made yourself a prisoner of the so-called white man. All right? Now there's nothing else that in front of you or ahead of you is but sin, transgression and resistance of the Holy Spirit. All right? See, you can't. Come on, man. Hey, and it's simple. You can't reason with him. You think even if he were to come up, you know, it might have to be a shark, like, it's going to either be the two extremes, uh, uh, who warns you to flee, you know, get, get your ass back in that burning house, or either get the fuck out the house, you know, we just tell them something simple, if you don't bite on it, fuck you, man. You know, you might, if somebody come up like that, man, look, you better repent, bro, you believe in the body, you better repent. That's equivalent to get out the house and then... It's, it would be good. It would behoove you to get out, leave out. Yeah. And I'm leaving. I'm already out. <laughs> I ain't going to waste too much time with you. <laughs> you look that again. I'm, I'm pulling out. It's it's again, versus the other extreme, he's just telling you, get back in there, man. I go out. It says, it bringeth forth <laughs> sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's it. See, that's the result. That's the result of, of see, uh, your walk, it has a, a destination. The path you have embarked on, all of you Americans, either, either individually or is in the form of a fucking church, a denomination, who cares? Your walk, right, is, it has a destination. So in essence, your destiny centers around the doctrines you subscribe to. All right? Yep, that was it on that? Yeah, all right, come on. God, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, starting verse 21. It says, With much fair speech, she calls him to yield mm -hmm. with the flattery of her lips. Right, and that's them, that her is dealing with America, man. Her lips deals with the philosophies, her advances. Because she's trying to seduce you. And that seduction is played out through commercials and trends. You know, motherfucker promote the new 2023. Uh, uh, CL 300 Mercedes Benz, right? That that's uh, a, a bait. That's set, that's out there to draw you. See, that's a part of uh, the lore, if you will, of the whore, man. America. That's why even John, when you read the scripture, when John, the angel, yeah, the, the angel at John, why marvel at him, man? Because it has a seductive overtone to it. You can easily be drawn to it. You can easily become a football player, basketball player. Not to say that's just completely wicked, but those are just another a, a step in the wrong direction, another step backwards, if you will. And whether it decline into her ways. Because now you have to, uh, what? You have to invest your time into whatever craft, whatever art, whatever bullshit you're into, man. All right, come on. Todd, it says, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Uh -huh. He go up after her straightway. Oh, read that again. He go up after her straightway. Right, he go up after her straightway, man. So that means that you pretty much fully commit to America. You 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 subscribe to her ways, which it leads to death. Yep, go ahead. He go up after her straightway. Yep. As an ox that go to the slaughter. See, as an ox that go to the slaughter, man. And that straightway, that pretty much, you know, when you look at those ox or, you know, stalls or whatever animal it might be, it's sort of, it's set up like blinders. When they put them in the stall, it's like a maze. 
Once they're in that stall, they can't go backwards. You go, and then you go, and then you have to turn this way, you turn that way, and, and then you into the slaughterhouse. That's how it is for all of you outside of the circle. Your walk is on, it, it's equivalent to being in the stall. Read that again. He go out after her straightway as an ox that go out to the slaughter. Right. Yep, and he going to the slaughter. Nigga <laughs> said, I love you all by my crazy shit. Yep, go ahead. Or as a fool to the See? COVID. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that what he said? He's straightway going, yeah. into, you know? Yeah. And that's really the mindset of all you Americans, you know? But again, we have, we're coming into a heavy time well, being in this truth is going to serve as that hedge of protection. We can't stress it uh, uh, more than we've been stressing it. All right, there's a sense of urgency. Matter of fact, we can raise our hands. Go to Ephesians, what that was I called for? Ephesians, uh, the first one. chapter, I think, around the 13. But you can get whatever meat. And we're going to go to the blue letter on it, Baba Kasha. Right? Because it's benefits that come with this label, man. All right, and not just that, but those of you in his hearing. That's heavy though, that Psalm 91, the secret place of the Most High. When you read that in, in its entirety, it builds up to the Lord delivering and honoring us. All right, you go into that word honor, it goes into promotion. So physically, we're gonna actually be raised up. Oh, what's that, uh, when, when the scripture is saying, I wanna say this, uh, Bubbling up, water, oh, yeah, bubbling up. Oh, yeah, right. Springing up the well. Right. When you go out to that word springing up, it goes into leaping. So, physically, one of the words that leap. So, there's going to be a point where you're going to physically leap into the arms of your shop pretty much. Right? That's what this word produces and develops. Salvation, man. And not that traditional sense of salvation where your grandma died and, you know, you can you, you apply that word to her passing. Salvation, she's saved now. No, nah, that salvation is going to be from the said peril. All right, so, uh, come on. Okay, it's the book of Ephesians 1. I started at verse 9. It says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good God. It says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, According to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. So the Lord has pretty much revealed his, his word unto us, his, his will, which is the, the secret, the prophecy, man. That's that mercy, man. You know, y'all about to start revealing these things unto us. It said that in the time, this dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together and one all things in Yahweh, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. So it's this word that gathering us, man. Mm -hmm. And whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Right, right, right. It's true that that's our inheritance was in uh, Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, yeah. yeah uh, it was given uh, line by line, yeah, yeah. generation to generation. generation yeah. They shall possess it forever. Yep, that's it. Yep, meaning we we'll always have an access to this, this refuge. It, it's like an invincible house, refuge. Yeah, y'all good? It's like a, yep. How you doing, bro? Yeah, it's like an invincible uh, uh, tabernacle, all right, in time of trouble, okay? That's what we have access to. That's that key. That's that key. Yep, come on. It says, it says that we should be to the, it's like it, that we should be to the praise of His glory, mm -hmm. who was, who first trusted in Yahweh Shai, yeah. in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. See, and that applies to all of us, right? Mm -hmm. You trusted once you heard the word of truth. That's how you trust. Oh, and that goes back to that that wacky tacky Christian who walked up. We asked him, how do you trust? And he said, you look up, you know, it's the first thing. Then he actually got the scripture. Don't do this. I would look to the hill. Yeah, that doesn't mean we're going to be looking at the curves and black. Let's show these Christians is crazy, man. The insanity of Christianity. You can't reason with them. That's why I get it now. The public hospital just let, tell them to keep moving, man. Now we'll pull them to the side for edification's sake. But other than that, we're not looking to convert them 
right? Yeah, see, so it said, read that part again. And whom also, like, and whom ye also trusted, mm -hmm. after that ye heard the word of truth. Right, so we trusted, once we heard the report, we trusted it. When we was given the report that we was Israelites, we wasn't just so-called Neg Negroes and Latinos and Native Americans, we was Israelites. When we heard that report, we trusted it, man. That's what the scripture said. All right, go ahead. The gospel of your salvation. See, read that again. The gospel of your salvation. See, that proves that this thing spills over into salvation. And again, salvation is a process, man, which will be perfected at the return of our Lord Yahweh Shah, but proceeded with being preserved from, from the plague. Come on. It says, in whom also after that ye believe. See, after you believe, see, now we're going into the chronological order of this. After you heard it and after you believe, go ahead. Ye were sealed. Ye were what? Sealed. Ye were sealed. Go ahead. With that Holy Spirit of promise. With that Holy Spirit of promise. That proves that the promises, like I said earlier, is not just in the kingdom. That's going to be the perfection. But the promises entail the Lord delivering you from the, the things that's on the horizon. All right? Now, real quick before we close, let's look up this word right here. Kind that word sealed. Strong's G4972. Yep. It says... A seal to me mm -hmm. to set a seal upon, uh -huh. marked with a seal, to seal. Yep, go ahead. For security from Satan. See, for security from Satan. <laughs> so that proof, and that Satan is not talking about uh, the spiritual being Satan, or you know, some a motherfucker descend in your window. <laughs> That's talking about Esau, the so-called white man. All right. See, go ahead. Continue on that definition. That's right. Come. It said security from Satan. And that complements, uh, what's that, Proverbs, the second chapter? Well, how this word will ultimately deliver us from the evil man. Go ahead. It says, since things sealed up are concealed. Right, since things sealed up are concealed. Go ahead. As the contents of a letter. Right, now what does it mean when it says a, as the a contents of a letter? It's a letter and the contents of it is in an envelope. It's it enclosed. It's enclosed. You see, that's why I say as the seal of a letter, because the letter is enclosed. That's what we are. We are enclosed. Go ahead. It says to hide. See that? To hide. So that's what you do. We have a letter, and it's, and it's enclosed. It's hidden. So that's why that's right there. It, it's giving you, uh, uh, you know, it's giving you somewhat of a metaphorical look into the idea of being sealed. When you seal, it's saying as the contents of a letter. Right? Go ahead. It says to hide, uh -huh. keep in silence. Keep in silence. See, go ahead. Keep secret. Keep secret. And hmm. that's what you do with your jewels or anything that you might deem to have somewhere back. Oh. This is how the Lord view his elect, man. He, he has gotten them, got the elect, the jewels, and hid it away safely from the criminal. All right? So with that, I want to give all praise, honey, and glory. To Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rekakadash. Yep, uh, uh, double honest to the head of apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to you fellow neighbors out there, and always to believe it's the best that shalom. Shalom, ETA, a ball, a ball, soon. All right, very soon. Nice. 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 Get it.